That was an absolutely amazing climb, going from 300 feet where that small opening is down to the base here. Unbelievable. And what I have here is a very rudimentary map of the system. It's five and a half miles end to end. And about four and a half miles through that is the jungle section. Which is where we'll find the hidden rainforest, an isolated world big enough to support the flying foxes and even tigers that have been seen in the area. So it's definitely big enough to support a small population of Saula. But getting there means climbing, rappelling, and even swimming. Oh, look at this. There's an entire pile of bones here. These are not fossilized, they're calcified, meaning tons and tons of mineral deposits of calcium have added up on top of them. If you look at the pelvic girdle, it actually looks like it could be the pelvis from a bovid. That being said, it's really hard to tell. The only way I'm gonna know what it is is if I take a sample with me, so I'm gonna take one of these, and if it hasn't been completely corrupted by all of the calcium, we might actually be able to get a genetic sample. Very, very exciting to see this here. So you can hear we're getting close to the river now. You can see it's a huge river within this cave system, and the cave's absolutely enormous. So now the key is to follow the river, keep going down, and eventually we'll get to the forest. We've been inside this cave for over 36 hours with no sunlight. I've lost any concept of day or night, but I know we passed the four mile mark. Now the path is only getting more difficult, but finally I'm beginning to see the light. I smell fresh air seeping in. So that's where we're trying to go. But if we want to get there, I have to get through all these 30 foot boulders first. It's so narrow here that we have to go one at a time. Just gotta head down into that crack. Let's see how we go. Here you go, Mitch. This way, guys. Okay. There we go. A little bit of daylight. Our first sunlight in nearly two days. This is it. We found the secret oasis. God, look at that. Oh, I like want to scream with excitement right now. Just to know that right there is this primordial patch of jungle completely untouched by man. Likely the last one in Southeast Asia. Any animal that's ever entered the cave would have to come here to survive and then likely flourish. But what's amazing is the level of endemism that would occur in a place like this meaning species that occur nowhere else on Earth. You see all white bits on the leaves here in the vegetation? That's all bird and bat guano, meaning droppings. And that guano has created the fertilizer that has made this such a rich forest. I'm hoping it's made this an area that an animal like a saula is happy to live in complete isolation. And with no human disturbance, there seems to be signs of wildlife everywhere I look. Look at something. Thumbs up, something. Look at this right here. Oh, I don't want to mess that up. Do you see that? That is from a cloven hoofed animal. Down here in the middle of this jungle, there's only two things that have a hoof like that that could be out here. One's a mountain goat, and the other, of course, is Alsala. That's exactly what we've been looking for, the sign of a saula down here. Look here, see there's a little track that comes down through the vegetation here. Oh, look, there is actually another one here, look. I didn't even see that. That's a really, really good track. It's the right size, it's the right shape. I've brought some plaster so I can make an exact model of these prints and take them home to be analyzed. Just like that. Just make sure you get all of the track there. Absolutely perfect. Now I want to go to the other one that's up there. That has to sit for about 20 minutes till it's rock solid. Come to this one over here. Just perfect. 
even without a Saula print on file, analysts will be able to determine what Bovid left us by process of elimination. Never in my life have I been so happy to just find a single track. Yeah, this little leech. The good news about this is there are only leeches where there are mammals. We've got tracks right here. We've got a game trail right there. Interestingly enough, this guy could actually have the definitive proof we need from Asala. There's groups that are working on taking blood from leeches and testing them for Sala DNA. So in fact, what I'm going to do is keep this, grab a vial, and just put him right in there. You can see, clear as anything, that these are from an ungulate. They're from a cloven-hoofed animal, and it looks like they round in that heart shape at the top. Now, whether or not this is from a sala, I really can't say. It's not definitive proof. But what it is proof of is a large cloven-hoofed animal that lives in a forest where many sala have been reported. I'll get them analyzed with some sala experts and consider this a step in the right direction. While I haven't spotted a live saula, we now have prints, a leech, calcified bone, and an enormous amount of trail cam footage. After one more night in the tents, we've now got another mile to trek through Song Doon Cave to reach the other end and get back to the surface. After days underground, in the most breathtaking environment I've ever seen, Cheers. I feel Cheers up, how I'd imagine an astronaut feels landing back on Earth, to the sala. carrying precious cargo that we hope will expand our understanding of the universe. The Anamite Mountains are large and mysterious, not unlike our Sala. And although I found very few signs of the world's most recently discovered large mammal. Sometimes it's not about signs, it's about gut feeling and instinct.